Hello. Hey, today we are going to talk a little bit about weight management and how breathing is related to weight management. We have Mike White, the founder of Optimal Breathing here. So Mike, thank you and welcome to one more conversation about weight management. Thanks, Udev. It's great to be here. So let's talk a little bit about weight management and then, you know, we'll see how the conversation goes. I want to first know what your thoughts are. And based on that, we will take it forward, okay? Okay, well, my basic thoughts are that this entire country is suffering from morbid obesity, and people are eating foods that are totally stupid, and they can't seem to stop even when they know they're bad for them. So there's a lot of reasons for that. The uh, processed foods are full of ingredients that really invite addiction. And uh, people just can't stop eating them. Uh, fried foods are, we know that are bad, but you know, a lot of fast foods is fried. Pizza is horrible. I love it and I don't eat it. You know, just because you like something doesn't mean it's good for you. As a matter of fact, chances are it's been, it's been uh, filled full of addictive substances that make you love it and crave it and need it and it's slowly killing you. Did you mention addictive substances? Uh, you have to look at the label. Basically, you can think that anything that has more than four or five ingredients is it, in it is highly suspect. Oh, okay. So four yeah. or five ingredients and then you start looking with uh, different eyes. I mean, how many ingredients are in a carrot? One. Thank you. How many ingredients are in a uh, pea, a green pea? One. Uh-huh, good. How many ingredients are in fresh water? One. Uh-huh, exactly. So uh, you, you have to start thinking about what the industry has done to be able to perpetuate itself, the processed food industry. And it is nothing short of uh, legal murder. That sounds like a strong word, but take a look at what's going on with with morbid obesity in this country. How do you how do you define morbid obesity? How do I defend it or define it? Define it. How do you define? It? Well, there's over a certain weight, so and it's usually over 25 percent of your weight. So if you're 200 pounds and you you should be 200 pounds and you're 250, you're now morbidly obese. Well, when you say you should be 200 pounds based on your height. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're 150 pounds normally, and you're you're 200 pounds, you know you're 50 pounds overweight. Well, you're you're morbidly obese. Okay. You know, you could say clinically, I I prefer morbidly because it sounds a lot worse. <laughs> That's... Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that we can do around that, but the bottom line is what you stick in your mouth. Okay. So people, they get, it's, it's, it becomes a big mystery. And it's not a mystery. It's very simple. There's some things that you should be eating, salads, smoothies, pea protein, uh, maybe seafood, maybe chicken, uh, digestive enzymes. Uh, a lot of people's digestion goes bad due to all the processed foods or stress levels. And so it's really helpful quite often to have a digestive enzyme, you know, with with meals. I do, except for when I have smoothies. You don't need a digestive enzyme with a smoothie because it's it's already chewed pretty much, you know, because of the blending, you know, and it's basically a lot of times it's in powder form. So uh, you, just, you just take one. I do one practically every day. Then I add things to it. I add a green, green mix. Uh, sometimes I'll add spinach if I have some, you know, but there's a lot of really great combinations that have all manner of very healthy, dried, uh, uh, different kinds of fruits and vegetables in them. So, but doesn't smoothies also have a lot of sugar in it? I mean, you know, um... it depends on the smoothie. Okay. You know, it doesn't doesn't mean they're all equal. Okay. You know, you have to take a look at the label. You have to really learn to read labels, and then you have to, you know, uh, I said more more than four things is dangerous. Well, when you're talking about smoothies, you're talking about a whole bunch of 
of, uh, uh, of different uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, so dried fruits and vegetables. And that can be okay. So, um, you know, we really, now we talk about breathing, all right. Uh, breathing can begin to uh, uh, in, create energy uh, before, during, or after a meal. Uh, it can begin to offset the energy used up by eating foods. Uh, but the, the more I think about breathing is from a breathing development standpoint, because if you're, if, you're, if you're doing a, quote, breathing exercise, that may not be optimal. So what I want people to do is take our, uh, take our breathing kit and begin to experiment with all the different exercises in it. Then they get more intuitive about what they really need, what their body wants. It's not about me dictating to you what you should have. It's about you learning the, op the, the, the uh, options that your uh, body can decide whether it likes them or not. All right, then what you do, you basically create your own program. So we start you off, in this case, with a weight management program, you know. And it's not diet in the wall, it's not the all to be all, but it's a very good start. So you, you, you start there and you begin to, number one, calm down. You begin to energize when you need, when you need energy, you, be, you begin to offset the negatives of some of the foods that you haven't quite gotten rid of yet. And uh, uh, it basically is an adjunct. It's not the all to be the all. There are people out there that say, oh, do this breathing exercise and you'll drop 50 pounds and all the people that did that. Yeah, well, a lot of them mm -hmm. are, are major fat again. You know, so mm -hmm. oh, another, another illusion is, okay, exercise helps weight management. Well, yes, it does. Problem is that if you stop exercising, you balloon back up. You, get, you start gaining a lot of weight because you've been burning up the calories and now you're still eating the calories but you're no longer burning up the calories. And so they begin to collect as fat, you know. So exercise aids of digestion. Exercise is really good for weight control, but really what you stick in your mouth is senior to everything. So uh, do you recommend any um, calorie intake? Like when you say what you stick in your mouth, do you have to really count the calories? Because I heard a lot of theories on, okay, you should have 2,000 calories, 1,500 calories, 2,200 calories, and things like that. Um, but I'm not sure what, what is the right uh, calorie for me or for anyone of my age and my weight. Uh, there's no way of telling. It depends on your activity level. Yeah. Uh, and it uh, depends on your, and your, on your digestion. It depends on your assimilation. It depends on your meta metabolism. You know, so you're basically going to have to learn for yourself what it is that uh, keeps you going. One of the things I like lately is uh, intermittent fasting. It gives you the idea that you really, quote, don't need to eat something now. You know, people think that a lot of, think, a lot of weight issues is really about people eating to not get hungry. You know, I don't want to get hungry at two o'clock because I know I'm going to be busy. Well, so what? Get hungry. <laughs> it's not going to kill you. You know, drink some water. One of the best ways of curbing your appetite is just eight ounces of water, you know, and, and until then you have time to eat. So um, it, it really becomes more simple the more you, uh, the less you depend upon food for energy. Uh, food needs to be processed, digest and processed, assimilated, you know, before it turns into energy, unless it's full of sugar, which of course is bad. Uh, and so you can basically just uh, learn over time that what you stick in your mouth is the critical part. And uh, until you stop, until you start doing that, you're going to be bouncing around. You're going to be a, 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 a weight management loose cannon. Loose cannon. All right. So um, you talked about what you stick in your mouth. Is there a particular time what you eat, when you eat? Uh, that you follow i know you you you're 80 years old you're you know you're probably much more fitter than i am and you know and you give yourself a lot of credit to the good eating that you have been uh, having over the years so i want to know what's a typical what what's a good diet to follow or what's a good um you know eating habit to follow during on a particular day 
Okay, as I said before, salads, fresh fruits and vegetables, smoothies. Uh, I like pea protein. Uh, pea protein. Yeah, yeah, I like pea protein in particular because it's a good protein source. I'm a type O. I, I, I do believe a bit in the in the uh, uh, blood type and, and diet uh, uh, over uh, insights. What do you mean type O? Like O. Type O positive. Is o. My, yeah, my blood type. You know, so I don't want to get into that right now, but basically. Uh, I find that uh, I'm also the 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 pandemic caused me to not focus on my health and do a lot of work with the uh, gathering uh, videos and making comments about all the videos. I put in about 1,500 hours uh, wow. on all that, and I basically stopped exercising. I, did, I didn't eat right, and I dropped a lot of muscle mass. So what I'm doing right now is beginning to regain the muscle mass with you know. Uh, I'm doubling my pea protein. I'm making sure I have a smoothie every day, uh, and I'm exercising as as you know. Yes. Um, I, I did 500 rows with the turbo, and I did I did 50 uh, dumbbell curls with 25 pounds each, and then I did about 15 minutes of stretching, you know. Yeah. And then some days I'll get out and I'll walk for uh, 45 minutes carrying 25 pounds of weights, you know. So. Uh, and that helps me, that, that's helping me rebuild, you know, my body that Julie really got depleted this last uh, 14 months. Uh, and um, that's it. So it's really, salads to me are one of the absolute best soups. Soups, they're already almost digested, you know, and uh, uh, lentil soups, you know, it's got a good, it's a good protein source. Uh, uh, sunflower seeds, uh, quinoa. Uh, I love it. It's so good for you, and um, quinoa too. Yeah, yeah, it's so good for you, and uh, you can make all kind of different things with quinoa. It's not a grain; it is a seed. It's a protein, and so you can make. Uh, you can even get quinoa flour. Uh, you know, you can make a bunch of quinoa. You can cook a bunch of quinoa, and then you can pull it out like you would rice. You know, every day you can just add it to whatever meal you're using. You know, and you can beef up your protein, excuse the pun, beef up your protein. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm mixing my metaphors, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, so, you know, it's really, really simple. You've got to really get into, don't buy the crap on the Internet. Watch out for, I watch out for television adver ad advertisements. You know, uh, they are deadly. Uh, stay away from them. He, you know, uh, I hardly watch the boob tube. You know, I know people that don't watch it, haven't watched television in 20 years. And you take a look at them, they're pretty healthy. <laughs> you know, it's not like you have to watch all that junk on television to stay, uh, to get and stay healthy. In fact, it's really dangerous. <laughs> it's really threatening to your health, you know. So. Yeah, I, I figured that out about eight years ago and I haven't watched um, TV regularly. Um, the only time I spend is probably on a weekend watching mm -hmm. a movie or maybe like a serial. But anyway, that's a different topic. So uh, coming back to the um, weight management and good diet, one thing that I want to ask about is what's a good time in the evenings um, to eat? Because I've seen people eat at 8.30. I've seen people eat at 6.30. I've, people, I've seen people eat at 10.30 in the night. You know, I know um, that the earlier the better, but um, what's the, what's the right time? You know, is there a particular time? That's a question. I don't think there is a right time. But you go to Spain, for instance. What really baffled me is that you know they did the Mediterranean. They did the Mediterranean diet with seven thousand people, and they found out that that's how they validated the Mediterranean diet. They had a, actually had a captive audience where you could only eat the Mediterranean diet. You mm -hmm. know, for uh, quite a, several months, and they really validated the diet. Uh, the first time they'd ever been able to control a, a lot of people to do the same diet, you know, and so, uh, but, so that was, that was one piece of it. Another piece of it is you notice that in Spain, Spain, they do eat very late at night, 8, 8.30 at night, you know, but they also have siestas in the middle of the day for a couple of hours where they don't do anything. There's got to be something associated with that, and I'm not sure what it is, you know, but, um, uh, I would not eat late at night. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like it. I like to be able to. 
uh, and stop eating around seven o'clock. Sometimes uh, if I'm doing intermittent fasting, I won't eat past like three or four o'clock. You know, I might have some water or something, you know, in the evening that's just maybe maybe some fresh pressed juice uh, around seven or eight o'clock, you know. Uh, but by and large, uh, I can just drink some water. Don't confuse hunger for thirst. That's one of the big mistakes people make, you know. They feel like they're hungry, but they're really thirsty. And they really just need to drink some water. Learn the diction. Oh, I'm telling you. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm not sure. I think it's going to vary culturally. You know, when you eat, how much you eat, uh, what happens the next day, uh, the kind of foods that you eat late at night, uh, and how much you eat. For instance, some people eat late at night. They don't eat very much. You know, for instance, if you're French, you don't gorge yourself like we do here, you know, uh, although you could because the food's pretty good, you know, but basically uh, you just, uh, your, your food is in moderation. Uh, so um, we don't know that much about moderation in this country because the foods, the, the, the processed foods don't satisfy. So you keep eating them again and again and again, and now you expect to you expect to feel satiated when you feel full. And trust me, by the time you feel full in your belly, you've gone way, way, you've eaten way, way, way too much, way too much. So that's the wrong signal. If you're eating the right kinds of foods, the salads and smoothies and, and uh, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and things, they begin to uh, they begin to affect your appetite. And they tell your body, I don't need any more. You know, notice the difference when you eat a salad, uh, soup and salad, you know, how you don't feel hungry, you know. And um, uh, if you eat a, like if you, you could eat a whole bag of potato chips and still feel hungry. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've you know? definitely seen that, yes. Yeah, and now you've loaded up on salt, you know. So... Uh, okay. Uh, you know, salt can be very deadly, uh, in, you know, in excess. Sugar and salt, uh, so uh, they're both, they both can be pretty bad. But I do salt foods. I use Himalayan salt, you know, because I do like foods and salt at a certain amount. Great. And um, talking about, uh, you know, good eating, I know some of us are vegetarian. I know you, um, you like to eat a lot of vegetarian food, but you also occasionally eat uh you know meat meat yes yeah meat it's called meat <laughs> yeah I, I, we call it non-vegetarian you know so it's meat yes yeah no, no it's meat it's, yes. it's called meat m-e-a-t you know it's yes. an, animal protein yeah go on yeah my question is uh what's a good balance you know uh between meat and um, veg vegetarian diet i don't know there's a lot of people that eat that eat their entire lives vegetarian, and they do quite well. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Scott, uh, the good Dave Scott, was a six six time Ironman triathlon winner. He's a vegetarian. Wow. Six six times winner of the Ironman triathlon. Six, not one, not two, but six. You know, he's a vegetarian. So you can do it. There's you, you watch the what's that that do documentary just came out with with Governor with Arnold, uh, and uh, sure, was, uh, it? was about about, about uh, vegetarian bodybuilders. Oh. These guys are monsters. They don't eat meat. You know they're big monsters. You know so you can it can be done. You know uh, you just you have to you know, follow the rules. So I don't think there's any. You know, I think individuals get to choose. Hopefully, we live in a free country, although uh, the CDC is working hard against that. Uh, and uh, Gates, a, Gates okay. and those morons. But still, we, you know, we, be, we can develop our own sense of uh, what we want, what we need, you know. And um, uh, that's what I do. You know, and I just tell everybody there's no one way for everybody uh, although vegetarianism has been around a long time, Ayurveda certainly val validates it. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, they add a lot of herbs to it uh, that we don't, and that helps. So um, it's, it's really impossible to tell. You can't lay your, 
your you know your ideals on of somebody else because different people are going to do different things what about an eskimo you know where are they going to get fruits and vegetables right you know of course their life their lifespans i don't think are close to what could be uh and that may re be part of the reason but they get a lot of their nutrition from the uh, the, the the organs you know of the animals that they kill so uh, that's a little disgusting to me but um, they're they're pretty happy with it and have been for many many years you know so yeah. yeah i think it's just a matter of finding your own your own path you know and then being comfortable with that and and laying off the processed fried foods pizza sugars salts you know excesses and uh, uh, that's really the key it's almost they're uh, freddie bishi one of my favorite people who's a who's a 80 plus year old uh uh, clinical nutritionist. It basically says this, the secret is a lot about what you don't eat. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. What you do not eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like television. What you do not watch. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of uh, negativity uh, that goes, and what you feed your brain is similar to what you feed your mouth, right? So. Exactly, and I do a lot of supplements. You know, and I, I won't get into the supplementation issue here because. It's really what it's not about. We're trying to do natural, natural weight management now, you know, and uh, I do supplements for uh, different reasons. Uh, I noticed my eyesight was going bad and I had to wear a glass. I'm wearing glasses for the first time. I was 77 years old before I had to wear glasses. And I realized the reason for that is when I stopped doing my fruit, my, my, my vegetable fruit smoothies for three or four months. Mm -hmm. And I stayed on the, the computer a lot. And so my eyes got worse and worse and worse. And all of a sudden, I said, oh, my God, I need glasses. I need to go to an optometrist and get a prescription for glasses, you know. And I absolutely hated glasses. I don't still like them very much. So right now, lately, I've been back on how to improve my eyes with eye exercises from, from, um, uh, from uh, oh, my God, now what's her name? Vanderwerf uh, uh, from... Uh, uh, <laughs> my natural vision trainer, and her name is escaping right now. Uh, but last name is Vanderwerf, and uh, you want to check her out because she's got some great, she's got some great natural vision exercises. But you can also be as short, I think I was probably short on vitamin E from the carrot juice in my, in my, uh, in my, uh, in my, uh, in my uh, juices. You okay. know, my, my juicing. And if you go to if you go to optimalbreathing.com and you type in juicing, mm -hmm. you're going to get a ton of information on how to make juicing so that you will drink it. So you'll have it available. Uh, you can juice. We, I used to juice about three gallons at a time and then food save them in half gallon mason jars. And that way the shelf life would go way up. There's some purists that say, oh, you got to drink juice right away. Otherwise, you lose blah, 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 blah. OK, fine. Well, that may well be true to a certain degree, but most people will not spend 45 minutes doing a bunch of juicing in the morning. I spend about three minutes, you know, because I just pour it out and then I food save the jar again for what's left in there, you know, and I go on with my day, you know. So uh, I dirty the kitchen once a week, once a week, once, once every 10 days or so. It takes me a couple of hours. I'm done for the next week and a half. That's it. You know, that's the way to, so you just go into breathing, optimalbreathing.com and you type in juicing in the, in the search engine and you get the whole regimen. You'll get all the 12, 13 different fruits and vegetables, you know, and organic, of course, and you'll discover what it is that uh, you need to do in order to make it simple. And Great. it works. Great. Um, one uh, final question before we uh, call it a day. Um, on the weight management, we talked about uh, breathing. In the breathing kit, you talk about weight management. How do you connect breathing to weight management? All right. Basically, I'm finding that most of it is about calming. Okay. Yeah, it's like people they get in a rush, they get um, uh, they get out of sync with what is going to be what's good for them, and uh, they mainly if it's about convenience. You know, and like I said before, you know, you basically a lot of a lot of hunger is either thirst and a lot of hunger is basically I want to eat now so I won't be hungry two or three hours from now, you know, 
And uh, that's a very dangerous game. A very dangerous game. You know, basically you want to have a banana or an apple or some grapes or something. You know, if you start to feel hungry and it's not really, you don't really have an opportunity to eat something more substantial, fine, then you just pop a couple of grapes. You know, uh, I remember I went to a raw food convention once and they had these plums, you know, and and it, were, it was a great experience because I would get up in the morning about 5.30, just, I'd just wake up uh, and then I'd work all day. I'd work on people all day until almost midnight, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'd go to sleep. Well, during the day, they would bring around these plums, just fresh plums, you know, and I called them fuel cells. You know? Fuel cells? Yeah, fuel cells. Uh, it's high density, uh, and uh, I'd have like four or five of them, and I'd go for another like three or four hours, you know, uh, five hours, and then I'd have a couple more. And I basically lasted all day from early morning until late evening, you know, on these uh, plums, you know. So uh, this, this, it was a, you know, it was a surprise to me. Oh my God, I'm feeling great. And I'm up and I'm active and I'm working, you know, and I'm working on people. I worked on 15, 20 people a day, you know, on their breathing mechanics, uh, making it easier for them to breathe, to sleep, to speak, to sing, you know, in about 30 minute sessions. Uh, and uh, so basically, when you're talking about breathing and its relationship to weight control, or weight management, uh, you just need to breathe more evenly, naturally, you need to sleep better, uh, you need to pay more attention to what you stick in your mouth. It's all going to come back to what you stick in your mouth. It's not magic. And you think uh, all of it is kind of laid out in either optimalbreathing.com or in the breathing kit? The, the breathing exercises in the weight management uh, theme, because we have about 10 themes there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the breathing exercises can be very helpful. Don't expect them to be the all to be all. Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, you do this, you're going to learn, you're going to run, you're going to well, lose 100 pounds, you're going to be, you know, the person you always wanted to be and all that crap. You know, it's not true. These people are selling junk. They're selling lies, they're selling deceptions, they're selling, you know. And then you try their thing, it fails, and you feel worse about yourself. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know, you just use the breathing kit to level out. Use it to energize. Use it to calm down. Use it to sleep better. Use it to speak and sing better. All the different things you can get from it. Meditation. People can't meditate. They use the breathing kit. They can meditate. Or they meditate better, stronger. You know, uh, energy-wise, yes, you can develop energy. One of the exercises is around energetic calm. That sounds contradictory. You know, energetic calm. I don't get it. When you feel it, you'll get it. You know, it's like... It's like tasting chocolate. How do you know what chocolate tastes like until you taste it? You can't read about it. You can't listen about it. You have to taste it. And when you're talking about optimal breathing, you have to experience it. Awesome. Mike, as always, it's a great pleasure talking to you. And, you know, definitely I've learned something about diet, weight management uh, that I did not know about it before. So look forward to more conversations. Thanks once again. Have a great one. You're welcome. Take care.